First of all, sorry, I'm not, I'm probably not a great public speaker, so, but I'll try. <laughs> so I'm going to talk about like a thing I did like this last few weeks, uh, where, uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of a cool experiment and I filed like maybe more bugs than my last like year as a browser developer. <laughs> so, uh, well, first, like, I guess my name is Emilio. Most of you know me. Uh, those who don't, I work for Mozilla, mostly on layout and CSS stuff, but also like a lot of other random stuff in the browser. Uh, and yeah, so WPT, most of them you hopefully know, the ones you do, who don't, like it's, it's an awesome test suite, like it's a shared test suite, test suite across all major browsers. Uh, there are like a bunch of different test kinds. Like there's like test harness tests, which are like tests that assert stuff using JavaScript. There's like ref test, where you like compare to H the rendering of two HTML files or like SVG files or whatever. Uh, there are web driver tests, which like do various Python things that I don't understand. And then there are manual tests and visual tests, which are effectively not very useful if you want to track regressions, but like I guess somebody finds them useful. Uh, so most new tests in Gecko, and I hope in the other engines too, go to WPT. Uh, but sometimes they don't. And they don't when like, well, something is ambiguous on the spec, so we don't, well, these days I try to land them mostly with like a dot, dot tentative or something, but like there's a spec ambiguity or like they test something that don't, that like a feature that only exists on Firefox and we don't use, like, like we don't expose to the web or like crashes, like crash tests. And crash tests are the one, like the test that maybe like a faster finds and triggers an assertion that like you weren't expecting. And the test is not particularly readable or it doesn't have like a particularly good like passing condition other than like, well, it doesn't blow up. Uh, and those are the tests that I was interested in because we land a lot of, like we have a lot of them. We have like 4,000 4, crash tests or something, uh, probably even more. But yeah, most of, so the issue with crash tests is that most of the time you can do better than that, right? Like most of the time the assertion that it triggers like actually highlights a correctness issue that you should be able to test in WPT. But sometimes they don't, like sometimes the output is just blank and you just like, well, you append a bunch of stuff and remove it and add a mutation of server and then stuff blows up. Um, or like the correct behavior is actually covered and it's like just testing some weird dynamic mutation handling may not be the most useful thing. And the output of this is that WPT, which is the test suite that we all should be using, does not get a lot of coverage for like nasty edge cases. So can we have crash test? And the, uh, the answer is yes, like James made an RFC for like load tests. But a bunch of people are still skeptic of their value because of the things I said, like most of the time they don't test anything in particular other than like it doesn't blow up. So I decided to get some data on it. Uh, so I just like, I know how to build Firefox, how to build WebKit and how to build Chrome. So I did that and I did like local debug builds. It would be nice if other browsers exposed it like compiled, like pre-compiled debug builds because it would save me like five hours of building Chromium on my laptop. <laughs> Uh, and I wrote like a really tiny Rust program that basically just runs a bunch of, like I like to write Rust code when I don't use it at work. So, uh, so I wrote like an extremely crappy like test, uh, like something that took a bunch of crashy tests from like Chromium and WebKit and Gecko and run them on all the engines. And Berlin is cold, so I need like something to like, uh, yeah, like having my laptop just compiling stuff makes evenings much better. <laughs> uh, so Chromium. I ran like all the Gecko tests on Chromium and I found like six different and particularly vari var like variety what tests. Anyhow, like very weird stuff. Like these are the numbers if you want to look them up. It's not particularly interesting. Uh, but yeah, it was surprisingly well spread out. Like I found a DOM bug, an SVG bug, some layout bug, some like media bug related to FFmpeg or something. And some painting some painting bug and some like canvas API bugs. 
And mostly debug just detects, but not only. There were a few scary ones. And yeah, I was surprised that I, I know how crappy editing is everywhere, and I'm surprised that no editing test crashed. Uh, so then I did the same, but in the opposite direction, and ran not all the Chromium tests, because Chromium doesn't have a particular like trusted suit. So I had like an heuristic of like, may this test be a test for a crash. And the heuristic is just like, does it have crash in the name? So it's not very smart. <laughs> but I found two bugs. One of them was a leak that we didn't have STR for. Uh, so that was pretty cool, and that I fixed. And the other one was an editing bug. Uh, yeah, editing sucks everywhere. I'm, I'm, so, I'm, I'm sorry. Like, and editing is one of these things where like the correct output may not be, like maybe different across platforms and that kind of stuff. And like trust test may be a useful thing. Just saying. And WebKit, so WebKit ended up like crashing a lot more. It's not unexpected because I run like twice the tests. I run both Chromiums and, and Gecko tests. I found like a lot of bugs, like a lot of them. Uh, most of them were editing bugs. Like turns out that they share like a lot of code with Chromium and Chromium fixed a bunch of editing crashes or something and like all of them still crash on Safari. Uh, but also like a couple of SVG, CSS, layout, graphics, a lot of like and a bunch of like crashes that like crash the whole browser, which is not great. Well, I guess only the web content, but so yeah, so this is the this is the table with the data that I took, like out of like the tests were roughly like 3k from Gecko and 2k from like Chromium, and I found like well two bugs, zero security sensitive bugs, and zero release crashers. Uh, well, it's the other way around. And in WebKit GTK with the Gecko test, I found seven bugs and one of them which crashed release, and like with the Chromium test, it found like 16 bugs. Uh, three that looked very scary, so I filed them as security sensitive, and one that like crashed the browser uh, in release. And then like in Chromium, uh, same like six uh, six bugs and like one of them that were like particularly scary. So that's pretty much it. It's I still have follow up work to do if I feel like it. I guess I still need to like run a bunch of WebKit tests in other browsers and see how that looks like. Uh, run a test with ASON, that may be even funnier. Uh, I'll grab some popcorn for that. <laughs> uh, and like just improve the heuristic to run more tests, but like it's not particularly, like yeah, I, I hope that this is enough data to prove that like crashes, crash tests in WPT may be useful rather than like uh, just running them in our particular trees. Uh, and yeah, like, those are basically the conclusions. Like browsers are very hard. Like it's super silly the amount of crashes that like the amount of edge cases that we share and like the amount of, of stuff that blows up. And yeah, editing is really broken. I'm, I'm sorry. I just I just gave up give, trying to fix the editing bug in Gecko because it was being like a nightmare. So I'll just leave up to like the editing owners. <laughs> so yeah, that's it. Maybe it was too fast. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> but, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, if you have any questions or something, I haven't published the manifest thing, like the runner, but I'm happy to do that if somebody finds it useful. And yeah, like, the, any of you have any questions? <laughs> so for, for crash tests and WPT, how do you indicate that it's a crash test for that suggestion? So right now there is not a way to do that, which is a thing. Right, but you've been talking about that as a proposal for doing that. Yeah, so I think, well, James has the details, but I think it's just like a meta or something. Yes. Yeah, so the proposal at the moment, uh, like we need to start from load test to crash test, we proceed further, and then you put like dash crash at the end of the file name, or maybe we support a direct people like crash tests, and if it's in that subdirectory, then they're all crash tests. Dash crash test. It's the latest iteration of the proposal, but I mean, I don't think you can that much. Well, yeah. Um, Basically, Mike should open names. Yeah. <laughs> That's a surprise. <laughs> so, I think there's a sort of problem, uh, <laughs> which is that I think it's probably very easy to put these in WPT and then nobody's noticed because 
like when you import the tests, like the first thing that will happen is like there's a crash, it will go, oh well, this is an imported test, I have to like whitelist this failure, or whatever, like allow this failure, and then we're not super good at like going back and going, oh, there's all this stuff that we're yeah. like allowing that we should. I mean, I, I, I speak to your to the Mozilla process, but we do triage the newly failing, the newly imported WPK tests are failing for their Chrome layer. Yeah, yeah I mean, I'm working on making it better for that, but like, the, yeah, figuring out what the right kind of thing to do, like, should we just like automatically pass up for each of these, maybe? Probably, at, at least. Or one for, like, I think what Chromium does is just, like, one for each import or um, component, maybe? Chris, do you know? Uh, I don't remember how the bug works, but you do have a triage process for the bug But yeah, so probably if somebody adds, like, 10 tests to the same directory that test one feature that we don't implement, you don't want 10 different bugs. But maybe... Per yeah, I, I, the direction that we're going for other stuff, like, not but this could probably write only as like one bug per PR that um, like has certain kinds of failures that haven't already been pre-crushed. That sounds reasonable. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. But yeah, like I think at the moment, like I think a service in that is a like, I, I mean, if it crashes the debug build, then yes, I think it would fit into it. Yeah, it definitely. Like, I think like a, a crash would be seen if it's like an ASAP. No, no, no. I'm talking about debug assertions that crash. Sure. Like, okay. Yeah, but not but we have like non fatal assertions as well. Oh, yeah. That I don't, those are not useful. <laughs> like, I agree. Those suck. <laughs> like, like having an assert that just brings something to the console is useless. <laughs> Any other? Yep. Just for me to follow the methodology. You took uh, what you call crash passes from Firefox suit, so it was something that used to crash Firefox when it fixed. Right. And you tried the same task on a different... Uh, a you different did. engine, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, Firefox has a specific manifest for, like, all these, like, files that used to crash Firefox, but no longer do. Uh, and, yeah, it's, it, it's pretty easy to parse, so I just took them all and run them locally. Like, there's a bunch of tests that doesn't, like, there's a couple tests that time out because, like, you know, they have, like, nested iframes and, like, they don't load cross-origin or, like, since they are in, since I just didn't bother, like, spawning a web server or anything, they just run in the file, like, like, the file colon colon URL. So, like, they are not same origin, so some of them cannot, like, communicate with the parent and that kind of stuff. But, like, yeah, so there's a couple tests that I didn't, like, I didn't bother, like, making them work, but, like, most of them, yeah, just weren't fine. Any other question or? You need to look also for the one that crashed in the content of the test. No, 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 that's a good. That's a good point. Because because it's not they didn't bother opening the file. No, but I mean, like, yeah, I agree for something. Yeah. I mean, because sometimes you put the last crash at the end, but sometimes I believe there are some that don't have that. <laughs> right. That's kind of something yeah, like that I may say that. It passes it, it doesn't graph in the back or whatever. <laughs> right. Yeah, it, it feels like it would be very easy for Gecko to just start up streaming all of this stuff. But it, I mean, all. But, <laughs> um, so yeah, I don't know if there's like a work capable program way to get people to, I mean, I guess it's just internal advocacy to stop just writing layout text that right. crack, don't crack or do crack. Instead, it's all right. But yeah, so maybe it could be harder to convert the existing ones. Well, Gecko sounds like maybe yeah, Gecko sounds pretty easy to just yeah, somewhere. Like, presumably, at the moment if they need to like do something, they have like rep test wait, and we might want to change that to some wait because they're not like actually rep tests. <laughs> yeah, right. But, yeah, like, so Chromium has, uh, I guess, blink has contributed some crash tests already to WPT, except, of course, they're contributed as regular tests. Right. Um, does, I guess, does Mozilla have some kind of process that it notices if those would start assert asserting? Yeah, so, so if it, like, if it doesn't assert now, like, I think, uh, 
James can correct me, but like if, if we land a test that's failing and crashing, for now it just gets imported with like expected, expected crash, uh, and there's no bug on file. I think that's what he was talking about. Um, but like if you land it in WPT and it's not crashing in Firefox, but I write a patch that makes it start crashing, I will notice, right? So that's also useful. Like yeah, and and yeah, there like you can you can use the regular test hardness test and just like write a dummy like test function that says well passive it doesn't crash, uh, but that's not great because like sometimes actually like a script like just having any sort of like extra thing in the DOM or whatever just makes the thing like not reproduce or whatever. So like for layout stuff, it's not a big deal. I guess we could. Like it's just way more convenient for people to land it into the crash test directory, and I, I I'm not like yeah well you know this is useful and like we should like so we could land them as test hardness tests, but like for a couple other tests, especially like the DOM ones and that kind of stuff, or like some of them that are like XML thingies, maybe they just don't repro with like an extra script and, a, and all the metadata. I agree that that will get better. Yeah. Anything else? Then I'll be here. <laughs> <laughs>